Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you all had a great Christmas with your families. Real quick video here. After our most recent video, changing the cutout while on hooks, there was quite a few questions about the secondary grounds that were used on the transformer. So we're just gonna take a little bit closer look at the secondary grounds and a few questions that were asked about the procedure. Mostly, uh, one of the questions I wanted to address, and we got a call that just came in. It's lunchtime, but we gotta go guys. So we're gonna pick this up again, maybe tomorrow. So first thing guys, these aren't a set of jumper cables that we bought at the local hardware store. They are put together at our service center. They have an actual proper crimp underneath that handle. There's also a bonding strap in here. That way, regardless of what size of the jaws making contact, it's gonna pass through the bond and into the number two copper wire. And they are also tested annually. You can see this one here expires July, 2021. I'm not sure how much current they actually put through them, but they are a regulated tool within our company that has a procedure written up for them. So one of the first comments I wanted to address, one of the guys mentioned about them installing grounds at their company on the neutral going up to the primary. That's, that's a whole different topic guys. These are not protective grounds for, for high voltage. Um, they're not, they're not approved for bonding and grounding your work area in any way, shape or form. These are simply to prevent the back feed when working in a transformer. Even if you have a work area that's completely grounded out, bonded, you followed all your procedures, you go to work on a transformer and you take the lead out of that top bushing. Once that lead comes out of the bushing, that primary bushing itself isn't grounded anymore. And the danger is if there's any voltage on the secondary side, it'll back feed up through that transformer at whatever the ratio is in our case we're looking at 60 to 1 so if you have 120 volt back feeding up through that bushings you're going to get 7200 volts on the top side so this eliminates that low voltage hazard now most times and the and the ideal thing to do is actually remove the secondary connections from the transformer so once those secondary wires are removed from the transformer it eliminates the possibility of that back feed uh, a lot of the guys also pull the meters and that's that's something you'll hear quite often if you remove all the meters it'll eliminate the possibility of that back feed and it will for for generators and a few other sources uh, solar for example so to sum it up there's basically three things you can do to protect yourself from any hazardous voltage on that primary bushing one is remove the secondary leads from the transformer two is remove the meters and three put on an approved set of secondary grounds, we call them here. So as far as removing the meters, that's not always feasible. Um, it could be downtown, it could be locked buildings, apartment buildings, there's, there's many meters that we don't have quick access to. It just, it might not make sense for the situation. And, and it could also be underground. You can remove all the meters you want, but ultimately you're relying on documentation or labeling in the field to make sure that you pull the appropriate meters associated with that pad mount transformer. And another thing with pad mounts, those secondary leads are a lot tougher to get off. You could have multiple, multiple runs of 500 MCM coming up onto that pad mount. So these secondary grounds work great for that. Also, when working in a pad mount, guys, we've got this special adapter on the ground here. So this, so this is your typical duckbill on a primary ground. And on the other end of this guy, we've got an elbow that plugs directly under the socket of the transformer. Now this is actually a, a double parking stand. So that sits onto the steel of the pad mount. You put your isolated elbow on this end here and that's connected in through the parking stand. You plug this guy on here, which you're gonna put that on with a hot stick after checking potential. That will ground out your secondary high voltage line. And one other product that we've got for this, the underground lines, 
I'm curious as to how many guys have actually seen this before. If I can remember where I just said it. So I'm curious as to how many guys have actually seen this device before. This guy right here, I'm holding on to the grounding bale right there. But uh, actually, if anyone's used this or knows how it's used, let me know in the comments. I'm curious, when I pull it off my truck sometimes, there's not a whole lot of guys that have seen them before. And I can tell you, these things come in handy big time sometimes. It can save you a lot of work for grounding underground primary lines. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. We are working on episode 14 of being alignment. I think you guys are going to love it. So we got that coming up. And of course, I promised you guys more info about myself. That's all coming up very soon. Make sure you consider subscribing so you don't miss that. And we'll see you next time.